year we had bulletin. And so, um, so please go to your cells. Take pride in you. 
do his best for you. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with giving so that you can't respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. So steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Dad, for providing all our needs. And the word says, according to your riches and glory. So, Father, Lord, all this distress and this unrest, Father, it is not from you. Those of us, Lord, who, who are called to serve you, Father God, Lord, we're just going to, Lord, repent for worry and anxiety. For repent, Father, of just thinking, Lord, that, that you'll fail us, because you'll never fail. So, Father, I speak peace. Release all anxiety about the times. I release all fear. In the name of Jesus, I just come against it, and I speak peace. Help us, Lord, to trust you. Ask your blessings upon this congregation. Father, no matter what time they listen, I ask your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you're here. Your spirit is here. We thank you, Lord. This is your service. It's all about you. We thank you, Lord, for your glory that's in this place. Blessing on the pastor and the, and the musicians, Father. And no weapon formed against this service will prosper. Amen. I thank you, Lord. It's all in your control. It's all in your hands. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen. 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 I love to begin our worship with this word of God. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I love hearing it from Pastor Regina. Yes. It, it's, it takes on life. Yes. And I love that. Yes. Thank you so much, Regina. God bless you. You know, uh, some of you may not, you've seen the name of the church outside, but maybe some of you don't know what Alders Gate is. Alders Great Gate is a street in London where John Wesley had his, quote, heartwarming experience. In fact, the, if you look in the window up here, you see the dove with the, the, the flames beside it. That was the original logo for Aldersgate, the very beginning, and it, 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 symbolized, it symbolized the heartwarming experience that John Wesley had on Aldersgate Street. Now, some people said that's where he got saved, okay? And others felt like that was the time when he got filled with the Spirit. I kind of believe the latter. Amen. And, uh, Amen. But it's, it's a beautiful place. In fact, that there, his church and his home is right there. And I was privileged to be able to stand in his pulpit at one time. Uh, I didn't preach, but I just stood there. <laughs> Quite an experience. So this morning, you know, that, that name, a lot of people don't understand what that name means, what Aldersgate means. And, and over the years, it's taken on a bunch of different directions. Uh, they called us Alders Gators for a while, mm -hmm. and then for a while we were altered states. And, uh, but we we believe that this morning we're on Alders Gate Street, and we are ready for everyone here to have a heartwarming experience. With Amen. The Lord. So, uh, let's stand together and worship our King.
found in your name. Power to save with only a whisper, mountain shame. Jesus, I hope and strength. You made a way, unlock these chains. Here in your presence, strongholds break. Pray by the love you gave. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. We can offer him 
as awesome as it is for so many people, is not how many times we come to church. The highest form of praise that we offer our Father is not how much money we get or time we offer, but the highest form of praise is us offering our heart. It's the greatest gift that we can give our Father. The highest form of praise. You know, we can sing to our hearts content. We can shout and we can dance. But if our Father doesn't own our heart, then it's a little empty. I call on you, church, this morning to give your heart to the Lord. You say, well, I did that many years ago. He wants it every day, church. He wants it every minute. He wants it every place we go. And everything we do and everything we say. That's where it starts. So in these next few moments, I want, I want you to give your heart again to the Lord. Offer it up to Him as a sacrifice. Lord, I give you my Spirit of God <laughs> loves to hear us sing praise to find. 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He loves to see the offering of our lives and the very essence of who we are. Our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength to love the Lord. All of our being. Lord, that is our desire today. God teaches in these next few moments <laughs> that, that there is a reality available to all of us where we can live right here in this moment. We don't have to confuse ourselves into thinking that Oh, I got to go to church this Sunday because I need to meet with the Lord. No, you can meet with the Lord just like what we've been doing right now. Every day. And if you will, even every moment of every hour to live in the atmosphere of God Almighty. So God, teach us today that uh, there is a way that we can do this. And we can do it because you've made that way through Christ. So we pray this in his name, for his glory. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Someone dressed in black or in red and with 
horns and a pitchfork and kind of gnarly looking. The Bible says he was beautiful and he's an angel of light. And Isaiah 14 says that Satan in that precise moment in time uttered five I wills. The fifth of which basically said, I will be like God. So he sought to usurp the throne of God and take over the whole angelic realm. We read in the Revelation that when Satan fell, he took a third of the stars, which are representative of the angels. He took a third of the angels with him. And they set up shop, if you will, and Satan being a really good mimic, a really good copycatter, said, now, if Jesus, when you read about Jesus creating everything in Colossians 1 and Colossians 2, it says that Jesus created principalities and powers and set up rulers and set up spiritual uh, delineations, if you will, in the heavenly places. And Satan said, well, if I'm going to overthrow this kingdom, I'm going to set some of my troops in those identical same places. And so we see in our text today even this Ephesians 6 verse 12 where God's word says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. There is a shadow government that Satan set up. And it is to counteract and countermand and uh, uh, contradict uh, and thwart the attempt to thwart the will of God in the earth and in our lives. Satan is wise and devious and evil. That we saw that. <laughs> laundry list in Galatians 5, those symptoms of sin and evil. And if you had any doubt that you uh, were already living in perfection, you just had to read that list and maybe see yourself, certainly now that you're saved and now that you know God, uh, not struggling in as many areas as uh, in the past. But certainly those symptoms were enough to be very convicting. Those deeds of the flesh, those sins that we commit against one another in murder and in, and in hate, those sins that we commit against ourselves as we try and destroy ourselves with all kinds of things, those sins that we commit against God and our allegiance to God, and God alone, when we decide to get off into idolatry and witchcraft and all manner of things. So then we see the, the progression then to these systems of evil and sin and evil that Satan set up. Satan knowing full well that man must have spiritual experiences. He didn't want them to have spiritual experiences with God. He wanted them to have spiritual experiences on the dark side. Luke, come to the dark side. Luke, I am your father. Always that temptation to enter into the other realm and to partake. And oh, and how exciting it is when you see manifestations of all kinds of spiritual things taking place before your eyes. We talked about white magic and black magic and white magic heals. White magic does, in fact, you remember the Egyptian magicians when Moses came and he began to do miracles there with Pharaoh. And he would do a miracle and the magicians would say, well, we can do that. We have the power to do that and they demonstrated it. And so now you have 
systems in place where it is absolutely no big deal for us to watch uh, Samantha and Delbert or Derbert or Derwood or whatever his name was in Bewitched. And she just twitches her little lips and all kinds of magical things happen. I grew up with that. I grew up with all the Disney things where little Mickey Mouse puts on the little sorcerer's hat and we think, oh, how cute. And now we've progressed so far into it that we have books that are written to perfection, to a T, showing our children in children's literature how to perform magic spells. to the tune of book sales in the billions and billions of dollars. All right. I was thinking about a billion dollars this morning. Right. <laughs> I think I'm right to say that a billion dollars is a thousand million, millions. And I thought, wow, that author of that series of books that they made movies out of and stuff, as 25,000 millions. Right. And it's just so natural now. We, we turn on the Netflix to watch Heartland. And the very first thing that pops up is The Good Witch. Or some other little, some little children, three, three girls, uh, you know, with witchcraft. It's just so natural now. The systems are just so so much a part of us. We don't see it. All right. And so it speaks to the fact that many end up becoming enslaved to these manifestations of sin in our society and in our culture. And the devil comes in and puts in a, a, a fortress, puts in this place in us that's, that's just so hard to tear out of us. And we need to be set free and praise God when Jesus came, Matthew 4 said that he came teaching and preaching and healing. All right. And part of his healing was he cast out the devils out of people. Yeah. All right. And he spoke to them and said, you unclean spirit, I command you to come out. Yes. And it came out. And in one instance, 2,000 pigs were infested by a legion of demons and they flew off the side of the hill. And as I remarked then, and I'll repeat now, it was the first swine dive. <laughs> Instead of a swan dive, it was a swine dive. The townspeople were so freaked out. They said, Jesus, please get out of here. You just ruined our economy. Yep. We make our money off of pigs. Yep. And they said, please go away. Let me, take some, let me just take a pause here. Jesus, the Bible says, he, he did not do many miracles in such and such a place right. because they did not honor him. And they did not receive him. When there is no honor, there's no ministry. Where there's no reception for the man or the woman of God, the ministry response is very low. And in the system that Pastor Regina and I are part of, generally our our sister churches take about as much of a fill as they can and say, oh God, please send us another pastor. <laughs> they petition the bishop and we have many who know how that whole process works. Say, please get us another one. Surely the, the next one's gonna be better than the one we, where there's no honor, where there's no receptivity for the man or the woman of God, there is no ministry manifestations. Jesus was thrown out of that area and he did not do many miracles there. Oh, how many
many churches have slammed the door to Jesus Christ himself and say, oh, listen, I'll go just so far with the Lord. But boy, you start tipping me over, like Brother Randy said, into an altered state. And I'm not sure I'm going to uh, feel comfortable that, with that. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. There's not a whole lot of, of uh, the manifestations of, of deliverance in a person that, that makes you feel warm and cuddly inside. Because the devil's got a hold of somebody and the devil's not going to let them loose very easily. All right. And there could be all kinds of stuff going on. There might be some profanity. There might be some regurgitation of breakfast for lunch. There might be some falling on the ground. All right. I guarantee it. We have some kind of manifestation like that here, and there'll be a few of us that'll go, mm. ooh, there went Chewy's. I ain't going to Chewy's for love. Oh, man, my stomach's too upset. I thought this morning, Chris, what it would have been like if I had the boldness, which I did not have, but if I had the boldness to stand in my New Testament class and when the professor began to denigrate the Word of God and say, you know, Paul didn't write this and these authors didn't write this stuff and, and just other people came along and they added this and they added that. What if I had the boldness to stand up and say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus that is heresy, it is from the Antichrist, and you are teaching uh, under the power of the Antichrist, and I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I wonder what it would have happened in that class. That have been some uncomfortable manifestations. I got to thinking about one one possibility was that after the the professor fell on the ground <laughs> and then gathered himself, he probably went would run down to the provost's office and say, uh, "We need to dismiss this student from my class. And get him out of here." Yeah. You see, it gets a little uncomfortable, but these people are enslaved. We talked about that compulsion to just keep doing that stuff. And God's got to come in and rip that junk out. And it ain't pleasant sometimes. And so, bless God, we talked about salvation from sin and evil. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't build this whole sermon series to walk away and say, Well, good luck, folks. <laughs> good luck with the devil. I hear the word of God. You know. See you later. No, bless God. We talked about the salvation Amen. from sin and evil. Amen. And that Jesus came into that place where that demon-possessed man, full of the devil, and, and cutting himself and, and living among the tombs and running around naked and terrorizing the countryside, that Jesus came in and when he rebuked the devil, they found the man. The townspeople couldn't believe it because they found him. He was seated and he was clothed and he was in his right mind. Right. What a difference it makes when Jesus shows up and rips the junk out of our lives and cleans us up. There is salvation. So now, what do we do as we go on? What is our posture? How do we continue to understand that we are in a war? And so I want us to read this passage, Ephesians 6, 10 through the first part of 18. And I read for you, beginning in verse 10. Finally, my brethren and my sister, I have added that part. Because I'm sure when it, when it says brethren now, it doesn't want to leave the sisterhood out. Right. It doesn't include the sisters. <laughs> Finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the... Is that even a word? No. It's not even a word, is it? Thank you, Dr. Barbara. 
I'm going to hear from the English prop tomorrow. <laughs> Finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the wickedness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith with, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Christian life is a life of warfare. Amen. And there's a good way to lose the war. And that's to not know there is even a war. Not even show up for it. What? We had a war today? What war? The Christian life is not a luxury cruise on a beautiful ship, the, the, the princess ship sailing leisurely to the harbor of heaven. Now the Christian life is depicted as one of a battleship on a theater of war ready to rock and roll for Jesus. The Christian life is a life of conflict and opposition. This passage did you notice five times it says that the Christian is against something? Against. 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 You know, it's a, it's a day and age we live in. We've been duped, my friends. This political correctness that says, oh, no, it's toleration at all costs. We must, we must tolerate one another. We can't take that kind of a stand, you see. You take that kind of a stand and you're going to alienate people and they're going to get mad at you. They're going to get upset with you. And, and no, the Christian life is one of being against something, against the world, against the devil system, against anything that is evil, against sin. We have to take a stand, my friends. We cannot have... It, Listen, the Christian life is not a spectator sport. Just stop and think of how many spectator sports all of us are engulfed in. You know, I could sit down and, and, well, back in the olden days, I don't anymore. But I used to sit down and four hours would go by watching the Cowboys play. Rain or shine, loser, win or draw, it didn't matter, I'd watch the Cowboys. And I could... Just sit on that couch and scream and yell at the screen. And I never really broke a sweat. I never really did anything other than just be a spectator. I remember watching the Texas Rangers a few years back when they almost won the World Series. Being gripped and glued to my chair and screaming and yelling. Just end the game. Just catch the ball. Let it be over. We'll win if we just get this one more out. One more. And we lost. And I wasn't the one running up and down the infield or the outfield or throwing the, the ball or swinging the bat. No, I was just a spectator. How many of us have bought into the spectator? 
spectator mentality in our Christian experience. Well, let's go to church and let's go see what's going on down there. I mean, they do have nice air conditioning. <laughs> and they do have really comfy chairs. That's a great coffee. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Heard it from our coffee lady right there. Amen. <laughs> and we come and we think, well, I'm just going to be a spectator in the house of God. Man, I'm not even through with the first page of my introduction. <laughs> the Bible says in verse 12 that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, that's part of our problem, friends. Part of our problem is that we think that we're wrestling against that person we can't get along with. We don't understand that maybe, I'm just saying maybe, but maybe we don't get along with them because if we are trying to live for Jesus and maybe they're not, or maybe they are, but there's some kind of influence in their life, there's some kind of power that's having sway in their life and it's not the person that we wrestle against friends, it's the power behind that person yeah. that our struggle is with. Yeah. I can't tell you how many churches I have served and Carol and I, Carol can testify. I mean you just pick any name you want. You just, I, I just pick a name, it doesn't matter. Anne, we just pick Anne. Every church I've ever served has always had a hand. I don't know why I picked that name because this is my tricky here. She's, she's my bud. But let's say uh, Cruella. Every church I've ever served has had a Cruella. And I mean, as soon as I hit the door, Cruella DeVille is trying to bring me down Amen. and makes it her life mission to be a thorn in my flesh. Every and then I think every Sunday, thank you. And then I'd leave that church after a little while and I think, oh, bless God, I've been delivered from Cruella. And I go, and my golly, she has just changed bodies, but she's there again. Every church I've ever served. It's always had somebody that maybe I didn't get along with. They didn't get along with me. I have learned the lesson. Learn it well, friends. You're to love everybody. Period. Whether you get along with them or not. Whether they're lovable or not. Whether they're likable or not. Whether they're pretty or not. We're to love everybody. And if there's a Cruella de Vil in your life, you just smile and you just say, I, I love you, sister. And then, think in your mind, I'm praying. <laughs> I'm praying. You see, Jesus did this with Simon Peter. Jesus had just said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die on the cross. And Peter jumped in there and said, oh, no, you're not. We're going to rise up. We'll get some swords together. we got some big burly guys. I mean, we might have been fishermen, but we got some, I mean, we can, we can hold our own, and we'll defend you to the death, Lord. And Jesus didn't even address Peter in the next moment. He said, get behind me, Satan. See, he addressed the power behind the person. He didn't, he didn't put Peter into remedial discipleship 101. 
Now, well, I got to go back to the beginning with that boy. He got to learn that lesson all over again. Paul and Silas with the fortune teller. They go into the town and the fortune teller, well, these are the men of God. Hear their message. Follow them. Paul didn't take her aside and say, well, now, I need to get you into a, 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 a program, a, a D, a, you know, D, D program you from your spiritism. I need to put you into a 12-step Spiritism program. Get the devil out of here. No, he just turned and he rebuked the spirit. He said, come out, you unclean spirit. Yeah. You see, there are powers that we wrestle with. They're not flesh and blood. So, now here we are. Paul has said, put on the whole armor. And he delineates the armor. And so, here's the picture. Here's the Christian, all duded up. I mean, I got the helmet on. I got the breastplate on. I got the belt of truth holding up my, my daggers and all kinds of things that I got in there. The place for my sword. I, I've got, I've got the, my feet, they're ready to rock and roll. The feet, the sandals of the Roman soldier, the picture that we have here, they would have those hob nails in them so that they could have good traction in whatever kind of sandy or rocky area they would have. They could, they could have good traction. And they could move on a moment's notice. The Roman army was known for their flexibility to say, when the commander said, we gone, we gone. They, they broke camp and they were out of there. And so here's the saint of God equipped with the armor of God, ready to go, ready to rumble. Are you ready to rumble? And we're ready, Jesus. I got my stuff on. I got my sword, which is the word of God. I'm ready. Where's the battle? Point me to the fight. Tell me what to do. Let's go get him. And what does Paul say? Stand. Say what? Stand. 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 And having done all to stand, stand. Stand there. Well, Lord, I thought we were going to engage in some battle here. You are. You're engaging in a battle where you stand your ground, the ground that was already won by the victory of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago when he busted out of the tomb. And all we're doing is standing on holy ground and on conquered ground. We don't have to take the fight anywhere because the fight's coming to us. And we're going to stand. And we're standing quick. But we're not only standing We stand praying. Huh? Well, this word, uh, Paul, it, it says this word here, wrestle. Wrestle means hand-to-hand -hand contact. It's the Greek translation for that word wrestle. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's that, you know, Chuck Norris stuff. <laughs> Keep thinking Chuck Norris is going to come to our church. I'm believing God. <laughs> Lord sent Chuck Norris to our church. He just lives right down here. Send him and his wife. Let him come say hi. But that's some Chuck Norris stuff, some wrestling, some hand to hand combat. Don't we do that? No. Paul says, stand praying. Yeah. Let me tell you something that will open if, if you don't hear anything throughout this whole series hear this one thing the battle in spiritual warfare is in prayer yeah. All right. and so you wonder my friends, my brothers, my sisters why our lives are in the shape that they're in because in a 168 hour week 
how much of those hours are spent in prayer. We're getting the deputy dog beat out of us because we're not a people of prayer. We're to pray standing, but then we're to pray, <laughs> oh, I love this part. We're to pray according to the word, and I'm skipping a bunch of stuff. But when, <laughs> when we pray, we pray using the sword of the Spirit. Amen. We pray using the sword of the Spirit. Now, there's two ways we use it. The first way is when we stand praying, we hold this word up to God and we say, God, your word says that if I ask believing and ask in your name, you will do it. And so we make all our petitions known. We say, God, your word says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or is seen out begging for bread. And Lord, my family needs a loaf of bread. So I'm claiming what your word has said. Listen, the word of God is God's IOU signed in the blood of Jesus for you and for me to meet all of our needs. So we pray standing, we pray with the sword of the Spirit, and we tell God that God, according to your word, be it done unto me. You pray God's word. But not only that, you use God's word when you fight the devil. Well, let me back up. Let me give you Jeremiah 1.12. God says that he watches over his word to perform it. God watches over his word to perform it. If it's in his book, and it's in his word, and he's given it to us, we can take it to him and we can say, Father, on the basis of your word, I claim what my need is in Jesus' name and believe God for it. But then, second of all, we hold the word of, of God up against the devil. See, when the devil comes along and says, you know, you know you're just a, you're just an old scout. You're just an old good for nothing. You just, you're just born from nothing. Your parents didn't know nothing. You don't know nothing. You, didn't, you know, and just goes on and on and on and say, no, no, I have the mind of Christ. My mind is being renewed. My body is being renewed daily Amen. by the power of Christ. Why do you know that sickness is going to get you? No, I can come to Jesus and I can say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm believing that your Holy Spirit can surge through my body and kill the junk that's in my life and cause me to find that place of healthiness. I can believe it. And I can stand against Satan and say, um, uh, no, not today, devil. Amen. Not today. Isaiah, if your sister quoted this, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Right. So when the devil starts shooting those fiery darts, you just say, no, on the basis of the authority of the word of God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Right. None of that junk you're speaking into my life, devil's going to come to pass. This is what Jesus did when he was tempted in the, in the wilderness. The devil came after him. And Jesus hit him back with his word every time. Listen, uh, finally, not only are we to pray standing and pray according to the word of God, our sword, but we're to pray in the spirit. It's what Paul says. Praying always with all supplication in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit at all times. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, pray without ceasing. Well, Pastor, I, I'm, in, I'm in customer service. And I got to answer the phone. 
And I got to talk to people. I can't be praying when I'm trying to do customer service. Yeah, yeah, yeah you better be praying. Says Aaron. Oh, you need the Holy Ghost flooding through your ear in customer service. You deal with people like me that call and say, hey, man, me, no, I don't get it. You talk to somebody over yonder in some other part of the world. You both need the patience and love of God. But to pray in the Spirit is to pray at all times. Now, now you might be Pentecostal and you might be charismatic if you think praying in the Spirit is praying, speaking in tongues, speaking in your prayer language. You might be Pentecostal if you believe that. And that's okay. You can believe that. According to the Corinthian letter, Paul says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, I'm praying with my spirit and not with my mind. You can pray in the spirit. But I believe in this context that what Paul is saying, he's alluding to the fact that in here and in other places, he has said that we're to live in the spirit. Amen. We're to walk in the spirit. Amen. We're to pray in the spirit the Spirit. We're supposed to do everything in an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Always at all times. And so I want to conclude with this thought. Prayer is warfare. It is the battlefield. The battle will be waged and won in prayer. And as a soldier of the cross of Christ, in this sense, we don't have to pass the physical. We have to pass the spiritual. I was thinking about this fully in this morning, and I thought, how can I talk about praying in the Spirit at all times, praying at all times? We're to pray at all times. Did you know that? You should be praying right now. Some of y'all are praying, oh, I pray that the line of chewies is not too long today. Because I'm hungry. Some of y'all are praying, oh my God, when I go out to the car, I hope it starts. When I put the key in. Oh, we're praying. I know many of y'all are praying. I pray. But we're to pray at all times. And I got to think of this image. Think this image of praying all the time. I want to encourage us to pray all the time. You rem I remember when the Bluetooth phenomenon came out. You remember, the, you know, people put the little thing in their ear and they, they had their phone in their pocket and, and, and you'd be walking through the Walmarts or the Targets or wherever and you'd just see this person. <laughs> He's a taco short of a combination plate. You know? <laughs> but now we understand that what's happening is they got that little communication device in their ear and they're there on a conversation. So I listen, I've got a perfect cover for every one of y'all. You can pray at all times. And just act like it's a Bluetooth Jesus. And you just talk to him all the time. You be driving in the car. Jesus, oh Lord, help me. Oh, that man just pulled in front of me. Oh Lord Jesus, save me. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Lord, I need help. Amen. This, that, and the other. Whatever comes into your life, always praying all the time. Just start talking. Start moving your mouth. Amen. And everybody just said you're on Bluetooth. Amen. I make the point one more time. If the battle is in prayer, how much are we giving ourselves to prayer to be able to stand, stand on his word, and to pray in the spirit? 
How are we doing? How are you doing, folks? So this morning's invitation is very simple. We've made all these wonderful declarations. And I praise God for your willingness to do that. But I'm going to ask you to make a declaration this morning. And I'm going to ask that if you would be, and you don't even have to come up here to the front. You can just right where you are. You can stand. But if you are saying today, I choose this day to enter the battle that's already raging, and I want to stand, and I want to be a person of prayer. I'm going to make a commitment to pray and have prayer. The main focus of my entire life is just talking to God. I don't, listen, it's a, I can embarrass myself this morning how many things I talk to God about. Amen. Yep. I mean, and, and, and you said, well, Pastor, you're silly. You really talk to God about that? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss Fincher, I'll never forget Miss Fincher. Did a revival out in Booth. And Miss Fincher. She'd say, she's just a good old country woman. She said, I don't do nothing but what Jesus just tells me to do. And I go to the closet and I say, Jesus, what do you want me to wear today? <laughs> and Jesus tells me. All right, Jesus, do I wear these shoes now? And Jesus would tell me. She said, one time I got in the car, I was going to go see my daughter down in hers. And I started, the keys started to back up in the driveway, and I stopped, and I said, oh, my Lord, I didn't ask Jesus if I was supposed to go. And so she pulled back in the garage. She got out of the car. She went in the house. She said, Jesus, am I supposed to go? And Jesus said, no. So I didn't go. This woman lived in an atmosphere of prayer. That's all she did was talk to Jesus and talk to others about Jesus. I'm asking you today to make a declaration to say, I want to win the battle. I want to fight against these things in my life. And I'm going to stand, and I'm going to stand praying. Randy, I don't know what we've got uh, for our song today. But let's use that to close with. This will be our invitation song. You come, take a stand, say, I want to be a person of prayer. I want to be a person of prayer. The battle is in the prayer life. It is. The warfare is in the prayer life. It is. You're going to witness to somebody, you've got to pray to that person. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, the Bible says that his eyes are blinded by the God of this world. And Father, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to remove the blinders so that when I share the gospel with him, He'll hear the glorious deeds of God and accept you into his life. And so we stand, we declare ourselves. We're going to be people of prayer. Aldersgate was founded on prayer. The prayers of God's people are in the walls, they're in the foundations. We've got to have prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Pray as a family. Pray on your own. Pray as a couple. Pray in your closet. Pray in your car. Pray at the table. Pray in church. Pray at work. Pray at school. Pray in the H-E-B. Ain't nobody looking at you. Everybody's so busy at H-E-B, they're not looking at you. They can care less. You just have a good time. You and Jesus go shopping. Jesus, I'm on aisle 13 here. I need to know which one of these uh, nutrients or supplements I need to buy to help my body. Talk to the Lord. Everybody think you're on Bluetooth. You be talking to Jesus. You just talk to Jesus. Tell him all about it. Tell him everything. Don't be afraid. Be a person of prayer. Again, some of us are getting beat up because we're fighting. 
We're, we're not fighting. We're sitting in prisoner of war camps because we've been taken captive not realizing that there was even a war. We're locked up in prison camp in bondage. Pray hanging that sheep rock. Pray painting that piece of lumber. Pray when you make that sign. Pray when you balance those books. Thank you, Jesus, that at least I got the money to write this check today. And I believe in you as I entrust my stewardship to you, Lord. Pray for everything that touches you. Pray for your family. Pray for the ones that, that have strayed away. Oh, listen. God loves those babies more than you could ever understand. Pray for those babies. Give your babies to Jesus. I don't care if your baby's 38 years old like mine. 39 years old. I give her to Jesus every day. And I just say, Jesus, you said if I ask in your name, you will do it. And so I, I claim John 14, 14, and I say, Lord, break through her hard heart. Heal. God, we your people stand today. Stand praying. We're girded about with truth. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the helmet of salvation. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's sing just a little closing song, Randy. I don't know what you've got.
You know, I may not be all that I, uh, I, I, God, I said I love that saying, I can't remember it. I may not be all I should be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen. All of us have had that kind of progression. We can give thanks for that. So this Wednesday, prayer, praise, and pie. Oh, that's a three-point sermon right there. Grace, prayer, and pie. Please sign up, Carol says, and we know how many pies that is. Amy, thank you for sharing with me. Thank you. We're so excited, so blessed. Uh, and then Friday, y'all get down here, we'll, we'll put a little thing up, a little wreath and a little poinsettia. Is it poinsettia or poinsettia? Thank you, doctor. The doctor of English has corrected me once again. It's poinsettia. Well, I can't wait to get my lecture tomorrow. All right. Let's stand together and let's receive a benediction. Brother Randy, do you have any other word? Andy, you got a word? Pastor Regina, we're good. Bobby, are you good? All right. Deborah? Yes, yes. All right, Brother Jeff. I felt like Brother Jeff had a word. Uh, that's why I wanted to wait a minute. So I'm, I'm scrolling back up to see the date. Um, November 13th, I began writing this at 548. But God was sent to all the ways. Acknowledge him. And she shall drink thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Think not to thy understanding. He says every decision. God must be acknowledged. Acknowledge God and things like, what will I wear today? Or well, what will I have for dessert? In all of thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. And straighten thy path. That everything that we do, we do with faith. Because he will do it. He will do it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what we're going through. But he will give us the strength.